I'm calling the reconvening of the Board of Trustees of North Idaho College. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Oh, we have a quorum, excuse me. We do have a quorum. Would you join me with the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our first action for the evening is the approval of the president's contract, and I'll call on Mark Lyon to start off the discussion, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, let me first uh, start with a little background. This board previously selected Dr. Nick Swain to be the next college president. The board authorized me as college attorney and the board chair to negotiate an employment agreement with Dr. Swain, and we have done so. I've given a copy of the proposed contract to each of the trustees, and I will go over the highlights and provide some of the explanation right now. This is a three-year contract with a base salary of $230,000 a year. Uh, the college will pay annually into a supplemental retirement account 10% of compensation. No, let's let him finish and then we'll open the up board's, the board's If we're gonna read it, why don't we just post it for the public to have? The, the board's range for the base pay for this position was 220,000 to 240,000. So the, what was negotiated as the base pay was right in, in the middle of that range. The supplemental retirement contribution is standard for a president position and has been included in contracts for previous North Idaho College presidents. In our view, this is a competitive salary for a chief executive with extensive experience and qualifications for this position. The contract also provides for a $2,500 monthly housing allowance. The reason for that is relates to the housing market here in Kootenai County and the Coeur d'Alene area. As many people have come to recognize recently, this area is one of the hottest real estate markets in the country. Housing prices in this area have risen substantially over the last year or so, to the point where many employers are struggling to attract qualified people. This allowance is necessary to attract quality candidates, uh, and, and uh, that was uh, very important to Dr. Swain, as, as it should be given the local circumstances. Also, I want to point out that the termination section in this agreement does not include a termination without cause. And, and for the termination for cause, it requires four out of five votes. Chairman Wold and I believe that this is an improvement to prior contracts. Termination of a president should not be done lightly. And to ensure that such action would be appropriately considered, a supermajority of the board should agree. The contract also requires the board and the president to meet at the end of every fiscal year to discuss the issue of contract renewal. That gives both the board and the president an understanding of how things have have gone and and whether a renewal is is being considered. Um, historically, the contracts for presidents are renewed every year for an additional year. On balance, we think that this is a good employment agreement with provisions necessary to attract and compensate an experienced, qualified presidential candidate like Dr. Swain. The terms that are in this agreement that uh, I've given a copy to all the trustees are agreeable to Dr. Swain. And I do want to note that that, that is with uh, an understanding that he would accept this position, uh, knowing that this institution is facing immediate serious hurdles involving governance, accreditation, enrollment, and the recent loss of many of the college's senior level leadership. So. Um, Really, at this point, um, we would ask for a motion that the board adopt the proposed employment agreement to hire Dr. Nick Swain as the next college president starting August 1, 2022, and that the board chair be authorized to execute the employment agreement on behalf of North Idaho College. Mr. Chairman? Now, I'm very pleased to be asking board approval to hire Dr. Swain to be the next president of this college. He is an impressive candidate 
and it's clear to me that both his experience and his leadership qualities is exactly what this college needs. I will ask the board for its approval of the employment agreement so we can have President Swain in place by the end of this month. Do I have such a motion? Mr. Chairman. Yes. So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's moved and seconded discussion. All right. yeah, I'll, I'll start that discussion. Todd? Or like watching President Biden read there. All right, this is outrageous. This is a gold-plated contract. The public needs to know, 230,000, 23,000 more for retirement, 36,000 for housing allowance. We're at a base of just 289, not counting benefits, including health insurance, Percy, 24 days of vacation, sick leave, paying for his relocation where there's no limit indicated. So that could be an unlimited number. I mean, we're well over $300,000 and a normal contract is a one-year contract plus two one-year extensions. In fact, originally it was one year plus one and it went to one year plus one plus one when the former president was hired, Rick. So we had a three-year rolling contract with one year base, two additional contract years, and then you could add an additional year each year as you came up on that anniversary. Instead, We've got a three-year contract, which is unprecedented. We've never done that before. So that's that in itself. We just did a gold-plated contract. Uh, that's we're just wow, shocking. Um, you know, we're supposed to be fiduciaries. You really set the bar for the future. I guess you do what you think is best, whatever the cost or the means used. You know, it's kind of like us. We have unlimited money, and 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 we'll do what we want here. You know, it's a, it's an interesting thing because. We look at the uh, at this process, and I'm going to talk about that for just a second because I believe you guys violated open meeting law, and I think everything they're after is tainted and null and void, just like what happened to the alternate form of government group. You look at the emails that were FOIA'd, and there was already a draft of the contract on the 22nd, which would have been prior to that meeting that night where he was selected. Greg's going to talk about some things that will add to this, but it's just. Like we, we just gave him the keys to the house before, and it's not about him, it's the process. This whole process could have been anybody that we picked. We have no idea, he's never been a president. We don't know if the staff and faculty are gonna like him. We, 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 we have no probationary period built in. We, we, uh, we're giving him all this money and we're giving him the keys to the house. I mean, he had email accounts before he should have. In fact, they had to try to do non-employee forms, I guess, because it was prior to his onboarding, so he shouldn't even have had an email account. We've rushed to try to introduce him to the donors and the stakeholders and the foundation and the SBOE. I don't know about the NWCCU or not. It's, it's interesting. All this money up front, sort of like I look at like athletes, you know, if you have a veteran and you're on his second or third contract, then he's performed and, and you give him a certain contract based on that. But most of the rookie contracts are outrageous because you've got someone that's never proven themselves yet. And, and this is what I, I liken this to is that we're throwing all this money up front and yet we haven't had him work for us for one day. I, I can't believe we, and, and then trying to tie the hands of the future boards with these votes. I've never heard of such a thing in a contract. How can you dictate what a future vote is? There's five people on a, on a board and it's by a majority. That's how all decisions are made. I, I, don't, I don't know legally how you can try to say that we have to have more than a simple majority for any decision that this board makes. Uh, I guess contract law would have to be reviewed on that. So you look at the emails, you've even stated it. You and Dr. Wold were supposed to work on this. I'd like to know why there were so many emails with John Getty about this contract. I'd like to know what he saw if other trustees didn't see. So I'm gonna ask that question and why it seemed like it took several days for David Wold was even in the email loop that I could tell and trying to track those emails for on the dates and the times uh, that say, you know, draft contract dated 622. Um, which would tell me that there was a draft contract before, again, we even had the meeting and he was selected. Um, so somebody was kind of prescient about that, must have just known. So, you know, and I, and I don't get the impression that Angela really, although we were paying her salary, uh, I don't know that she was helping us in this negotiations. It almost feels like she was working for the candidates. So it, this whole process has just been... Uh, Wow, it's been a bit surreal just trying to look at this thing and how it's gone on. And I can't see how we're going to have a high level of confidence in this. I guess we're just to assume it's okay and everything that was done, and although it was, again, highly unusual and irregular. 
and and I've just touched on the surface of some of these things, but to me, it's a lack of in institutional integrity, and that's been one of the big uh, big points of emphasis through, the, through this whole thing with the accreditation. And the process got compromised. And you look at how this was done. Who was involved in negotiating? What's the timeline? How wh this whole contract is being put together? I've never seen such a thing like this. And uh, and then I guess the question would be. We're starting on on one August. What what does this look like? Is he actually going to be relocated and ready to move, and and ready to work on one August? I mean, I, what I don't want is for him to start work on one August and then have to go back to back east and 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 then get himself moved and then we really don't see him till September. So I guess that's a question I have too: is what's his actual availability, boots on the ground, and when do we get him full time for what we're paying for? So so that's a question I'd I'd like to ask too. You know. I don't know. You guys must think that any car looks a lot better when it's you know on the showroom floor sitting on the lot. But I think we haven't even test driven this car yet, and we've already uh, paid full price for it, and we're adding all the accessories. So I'm I do not support where we're at. We had reset the bar, and we're back down to numbers that were under two hundred thousand. It made sense. Much of the community was aghast, I think, when they realized how much we were paying the former president. And now we're actually going to be paying more than where we were. So, uh, wow, we've just reset that bar. And then, again, some of this contract just makes no sense, and it's not consistent with anything this college has ever done. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, yes Mark. Uh, I, let, let me just respond to a couple of these. Um, the three-year rolling contract is standard for college presidents, community college presidents, essentially throughout this country. And uh, more to the point, it has been the standard at North Idaho College over the last 20 plus years. And I know that because I have been here over the last 20 plus years. There have been some exceptional years where it's been different, but the three-year-old contract is the standard and has been the standard. And, and I do want to point out that virtually every school district in Idaho has a superintendent. Those school district superintendents all have a three-year rolling contract. That is that is what what the the State Department of Education uh, had recommended, and that is the required contract. So it is standard. Also, we have a, a, a basically the CEO, the uh, the head of a multi ten million millions of dollars, sixty million dollar budget organization with four hundred employees and thousands of students and other people that that we that we serve as an institution it is a very complex uh, organization it takes a lot of skill training uh, and knowledge on how to run that so attracting qualified candidates requires that you pay essentially what is the market for this rate and we think that is now to get to the question of contracts and was this was this all baked in the cake in advance? The answer is no. The board, I, I never talked to a single candidate um, except Dr. Swain and only after the board authorized uh, Chair Wold and I to negotiate. Um, that's the only, only, first time I've ever talked to any of the candidates. I had no involvement in the, in the selection process otherwise. I don't think I said anything about you talking to the candidates. I talked about the chain of sequence of events of the emails the and the negotiation contract, the contract. Well, I have emails with other people over other subjects and involving other matters. And my communications <laughs> are, are what they are. But the only trustee that has seen this contract that we are just discussing before tonight is is uh, chairman david wold so uh, that has not been shared with either trustee broche or trustee getty or you or trustee mckinsey normally we would have this discussion of the details in executive session but we were unable to get into executive session because we could not get four votes to, to do that so now we're in a situation where we're having to do this discussion in an open session. And really, it is a narrow issue that's before the, the trustees. The only action on this matter before the trustees is a motion to approve um, 
uh, uh, the, this contract and authorize the board chair to sign it. That's what the motion is. The history is the history. The negotiations took place and those would be uh, the discussions that Chair Wold and I would have with uh, Dr. Swain and this is the result of it. So this is what's presented to the board for the board's consideration. Chair sure, Wold, if I may. Thank you. Great. So what we're at right now is there's been communication that's happened on and it's being shielded through attorney client privilege by Mark, who's not giving it to me, even though I've requested a communication of this sort. You would think that communal representation on the board, our attorney wouldn't have to claim attorney private attorney client privilege with one of us trustees, but that, that's the thing. And, and another thing is a public records uh, uh, planning violation. Okay, so, so why don't we get the emails now that I'm asking for, Mark? Like it's happened in the past. There's no more responding. Am I gonna get the emails that I'm requesting? Because I haven't gotten those yet and I'm asking for those. The issue before the, the, the trustees right now is to approve the contract that has been negotiated with uh, uh, Dr. Swain. So what's going on is they've communicated and they're not wanting to basically look in the past to see if everything was done properly and legally. Because I... In my opinion, everything was done legally and properly. In your and, opinion, and I don't every think, conversation you have is attorney-client privilege. I don't sir. think it's appropriate to sidetrack right. this discussion. We have an issue before the board that needs to be decided. That's, that's the issue on the agenda. Okay. Can we keep the discussion to the motion? Todd. Okay. So, Mark, we have three trustees that or two trustees that have made a motion and seconded the motion and then chair Wold had his statement at the beginning yeah i don't hear the three of them defending the process it's fallen back on you which which is i guess that's uh, not to be unexpected but here's the deal there has been released through the foias emails and if you look at what wasn't redacted it shows who sent the email, who the email went to, what the topic of the email was, and if there's an enlisted attachment. And I guess I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to do this as politely as possible, but I, I guess I challenge or question that statement that you made a moment ago about the timing and who saw what. And, and, and I, I don't know if we're splitting hairs and if it's just this very final version of the contract that only chairman wold saw because i guess the other question then would be were there other versions of this or draft version of this that was seen by other trustees previously but not by all because if you look at the emails that were foiled even without the redacted con uh, texts that was in there just the headings seem to indicate that that was the case unless we're looking at those and we're not able to understand plain english or what it said was you know 622 22 draft version of contract and it went from here to here todd when I'm you just were asking the question when you were board chair you and i had many conversations we had many emails though that and our conversations and communications through email were not shared with other trustees uh, unless unless we agreed to do that. But that wasn't to Chairman Wold, sir. Well, some of those don't have Chairman Wold as the receiver. And I still I talk to other trustees. You and Trustee McKenzie have 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 not supported uh, any part of this process. And frankly, I, I, I that doesn't even is, isn't even important to me, because what's important here is that is that Trustee Wold, um, Chairman Wold and I negotiated this contract as the board authorized us to do. And you can sit there and say, you, you, you think that maybe the drafts were sent around to other trustees, I can tell you that they were not. This is the first time any tr a trustees other than the chairman has seen the negotiated contract. So um, uh, you can cast uh, uh, aspersions on the process, I guess, if you want to, but we are still down to the issue. We've negotiated this contract, uh, we think it's a fair contract, an appropriate contract, uh, and uh, this is the issue that the board needs to decide. 
And if you're unhappy with me and the way I've done, this is a conversation for a different time. Is there any further discussion, no. Pete? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, in reviewing salary survey data, uh, just as I did when we came up with the range, I looked at CEOs, presidents, COO, executive directors, uh, salary data points for the general area, various industries, for-profit, non-profit. I also included the president pay for the five local colleges that we talked about when we set the pay range. I also took into consideration uh, the complexity of the environment, multiple locations, 496 full-time employees, 443 part-time employees, uh, a budget of 50 plus million dollars. And the, the base salary data points for a top level position in this area are about probably 25 to 30% higher than what this position is being paid, not only base, but with the retirement. And then looking just rough numbers off the back of a napkin, at 230,000 with a 10% retirement. Those are easy numbers at 253,000. I believe uh, the last presidential contract, Mr. McClendon, Dr. McClendon, he was right around 225 with a 12.25% retirement. That puts him right about 254, 55,000. So the base pay with retirement for both presidents is equal or close to each other. I think that the, the pay for this position is appropriate. Thank you, Pete. Further discussion, Greg? So if you recall, Chair Wold, you sat down with uh, Trustee Van Ducci um, early on when you guys came on the board. And uh, this is third hand, I'm relaying what Banducci, I was trying to, and I encouraged Banducci to sit down with you and basically explain what happened with McLennan. And uh, basically this board had 10 months of uh, rocky relationship with the former president. And this board was left in a position and I believe Banducci offered to show you the ICRIMP legal assessment of our options. And one of our options was to roll over and play dead or to uh, let him uh, just build his legal case against us like he was obviously doing, I can show you. Um, and, uh, and so this board chose to move on to a different president who um, that thought was better and would not be building its legal case against us. So I don't, I'm sure, um, I don't like finding myself in those type of situations where um, that happens. Nobody wishes for those rocky relationships, but they, the re sad reality is, is they do happen. And um, this, as this contract is right now, uh, as uh, Attorney Lyons sent out, there's, there's no option if we find ourselves in that scenario again. Um, so just, I know the, the narrative out there is that this board got elected several years ago, and um, from your perspective, I can see you, uh, you're ones that have politically opposed every move. And um, so obviously you believe that narrative by based off of this contract. Um, and, but the, the reality is, is this board tried very hard to make it work, and it, um, it didn't work. And I can share a lot more reasons, that, you know, and, and unhappy scenarios where people look to this board of trustees to where is everything fine? And that when we're completely left in the dark and people are protesting on campuses and people say, hey, you know, I don't have to answer any questions, uh, then there's no way that we can fulfill our trustee responsibility. And so when this board, if it happens again, gets left in a similar scenario to where it's a very rocky relationship, there's, there's no remedy here as, as you just laid out at the beginning of this thing. 
Thank you, Greg. Uh, I guess I would have to respond. Beware of third hand information you get and quoting third hand information. Some of what you mentioned is not true, but just beware of doing that in terms of trying to use third hand information for well, an argument. Sir, if I may respond, I mean, offered to sit down with you one on one and explain to you what happened with McLennan, and you responded to me saying you want to move forward. And so, um, I'll, I'll relay firsthand information, sir, that you just want to move forward and not talk about the past. And um, when I offer to sit down with you and explain everything, sir. We're going to move on. And any more discussion on Mr. the motion? Mr. Chairman. Yes. yes. I'd like to speak to the three-year contract because I think that's, that's important to, for our consideration. There are huge hurdles that the new president is going to have to overcome. He's going to have to find uh, a new cabinet. He's going to have to address accreditation, enrollment, and it's not going to be done in one year or two years. I think he needs to be given the three-year opportunity to turn this thing around. And Mr. Chairman, with that, I would call for the question. I have more. I would like to respond to that, if I may. Greg, go ahead. I would just like to say this ship is turned around under President Sabali. And if you look at the letter from the accreditation um, agency, they basically said that our president, th there's no rush in doing it. We have um, well into next year uh, and that we're making great progress with the administration that we have. And that the only problem um, is with board members. And if I could just summarize here, it's uh, following procedures, uh, and being consistent with past practices and like fellow board members um, paying attention to board uh, directives and treating all board members equally and that the three of you have just violated everything that the warning and that the accreditation agency is watching for um, basically the nwcc is, is you're concerned with behavior and, and that we're listening to all uh involved parties <laughs> and and you've steamrolled Todd and when he's highlighted the inconsistencies of this whole process uh the board um community involvement we haven't listened to at all I mean shoot we didn't even post the uh the forums for links for the community members who can't even work for those that have a job I mean the, the fact that we're trying to say we're representing the community in this whole process is a sham and um just this whole uh, I, have, I have one more question too it's important for this whole process and actually it's directed toward dr swain if i may i think that's inappropriate at well, this time no it's, <laughs> it's not it's important because we're going to make a decision and it'd be nice to know that it wasn't predetermined in the first place Question has been called for. I don't think it's appropriate to ask the candidate, the candidate yeah, any questions you at this time. Mark, I would, I'm sorry. Todd? I, I do want it noted that I, Mark responded to a couple of things I said. One was, and he elaborated about the executive session. I want it noted that I did point out that it looked like there may have been an error in how we had the agenda posted for the meetings tonight. And we spent about 10, 15 minutes trying to clarify that. And it sounded like it was still kind of a, eh, maybe not, but in my opinion, it was not. And so we should not have gone into executive session. That, and that was part of the reason uh, that I said no to that. And so I, I do want that noted because there was a question was how it was, the agenda was posted and, and the con content of the agenda and the disclosures and disclaimers that are normally part of that agenda were not present, even though marked that they would be. You know, there's an asterisk there, but the below portion where the asterisk would be expanded upon was missing. So the public would see that we were going to go in executive session under sections A and C, but would have had no idea what A and C were. And, and that was missing. So we did not do what we normally do for the first time that I can remember in a long while. I would like one more thing to be on the record, too. Is that fair? Sure. I've noted that we're having a public meeting and that we haven't provided time, adequate time for the public to weigh in input 
for this. And so we're claim you were abusing attorney client privilege. We're abusing uh, the notices saying that we were planning an executive session um, that basically like to do this right guys, like you can still do this without Todd and I's help, but to do this, we're going to have to have another meeting and actually notice this for the public to at least be able to email us and have it noticed properly. And also the notion, the motion that was initially provided, it said nothing about fringe benefits, to be honest. It was base salary and um, this basically another 90,000 plus on the side wasn't ever discussed in the original motion. So now that is related to the motion. So you want to respond to that? Mark? Yes, yes, I can. The motion is is uh, for the board to adopt the proposed amended or employment the proposed employment agreement to hire Dr. Nick Swain as the next college president starting August one, and that the board chair be authorized to execute the employment agreement on behalf of North Idaho College. It didn't it didn't have the details in it. That was that that is the motion. Um, so and i would just say on, on the other thing we did discuss the agenda and and uh, i advised the board that the agenda was proper under idaho law and mark so i think we're at the point where we need to have a vote on the pending motion mark i did one question that wasn't answered what is dr swain's availability and he'll be here august 1st What's that? He, he will be available August 1st. He will be here in place and we'll have August him for the 1st. month of August. Permanently, not having to go back for another week or month. I'm going to intervene here. The question has been called for, and I'll ask for a roll call vote. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to go down, down the list that we had for executive session. Uh, Dr. Wold? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Brochet? Yes. Mr. Banducci? No. Mr. McKenzie? No. The motion. The motion passed three to two. Dr. Swain, we look forward to you joining us in August. We look forward to a, a wonderful experience with you. Process. I have a motion Process. related to the president's contract. The motion is already finished yes i have another motion i would like you to state the motion and then i'll i'll declare whether or not it's a reasonable motion in terms of the special meeting agenda i would like to amend dr sabali's contract that was before maybe it's no longer anymore i don't know if we No, that is not on the agenda no is it it is it's president's contract it is still is still president the agenda excuse me mr, mr. chairman the agenda states that the, the action item is to approve the president's contract. And that has been done. We'll so, move on to the next item on the agenda. I have a motion for the president's contract that I'd like approved. And I just ruled that it was out of order. The next when item there are on no the rules, agenda, could you guys remove Robert's rules of order? It's real convenient. Craig, are you asking to speak or are you just speaking on your own? Well, there's no rules. You guys repealed the Robert's Rules of Orders. The next Can item on the agenda is the motion? purchase of the property. And I will ask Mark to lead us through that, please. Mr. Chairman, uh, and I will ask um, uh, Vice President um, Garcia to assist on this. Uh, uh, it as 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 Vice President Garcia had told the board um, some time ago, a month ago, um, there was a property available in the campus area that it was private real estate that uh, was um, owned by a, a seller uh, that was interested in selling to the college. What is required to for an institution like the college was required for, for the college to purchase real property from a non-government uh, institution, a private party, if you will, is you have to comply with a, a legal process that requires that the property be appraised, that the uh, before the property is, is uh, acquired, that the uh, uh, property be um, 
that the appraisal be put into the record and that the institution cannot pay more than the appraised value. So the Vice President um, Garcia did have the property appraised and uh, that appraisal came in at a million dollars. Um, the, the Vice President Garcia has negotiated a, a purchase, real estate purchase transaction that is relatively simple uh, for a million dollars. And uh, I'm gonna turn this over to uh, Vice President Garcia and I think you can you can uh, say who the, who the seller is. We have a a signed contingent signed purchase agreement that is subject to board approval. So, Vice President Vice President Garcia, go ahead. Um, thank you, Mr. Lyons, uh, Chair Wold, Trustees. Um, as Mr. Lyons and as I've explained to you in um, prior, I have been we the college have was approached with the opportunity to purchase some property adjacent to the college um, and we followed the process as described by um, Mr. Lyons where we um, went forward and did a professional appraisal um, because of the requirements um, in in the case that we were interested in purchasing the property. Um, so I had a conversation with the seller. Um, the the property in question is the Fort Ground Grill um, property, the building and the land that it sits on. And it is kind of nestled in between two pieces of NIC owned property currently. Um, so I had a conversation with the owner of the property and um, we, we discussed the terms of um, the terms for which we would purchase it at a million dollars and um, I'm in the purchase and sale agreement it's outlined that the seller will deliver to us the building in a the form of a clean shell so um, all of the fixtures and um, any uh, anything related to the restaurant that currently supports the restaurant operations would not be part of what was turned over to the college Mr. Mr. Chairman, if, if I may yes. clarify, uh, I, I've handed out to the trustees a, a copy of the purchase and sale contract. It's, a, it's, it's fairly standard, except that it has a bit of a lease back provision in it because it is the Fort Ground Grill and the, and the seller uh, wanted to lease it back at least through the summer months. Um, uh, Vice President Garcia uh, has, has mentioned that right now it is, it is not anything that the institution would do in the short term. So the lease back is, is uh, essentially a triple net, will not cost the college anything. And um, uh, it, is, is, it is easily terminable. Uh, I've also handed out a copy of the resolution uh, for North Idaho College 2022-01 is it is uh, uh, appraisal and purchase of military district property. If you may recall, well, those of you who have been part of this process, this is a fairly standard resolution that we put together whenever we acquire, acquire um, property for the college from a private party. It uh, basically um, asks the, the appraisal to be entered into the records of the board because that is a requirement of law um, and has the board ratify the terms of the purchase and sale agreement which is essentially a cash sale agreement um, and uh, authorizes the board chair and in this case uh, vice president sarah garcia to, uh, to just to to sign the the uh, sales uh, purchase and sale agreement and uh, uh, interim vice president Sarah Garcia will be the one who will just go through and take care of the closing things on, on what's appropriate. So this is this is standard. We've done this many times at the college. The trustees of this college have always supported acquiring additional property, particularly where this property is, is almost like a private island surrounded by North Idaho College property. I would accept a motion to purchase the property. Well, uh, Mr. Okay. Chairman, uh, the motion would be. Um, oh, you, you've got. The motion would be uh, that the board adopt resolution two point 
I'm sorry, the motion would be for the board to adopt resolution 2022-1, entering the appraisal in the board's record and authorizing the board chair to execute both the resolution and the real estate purchase and sales agreement. Do I hear a motion? Mr. Chair, a yes. motion. Is there a second? So move, or second. Is there any discussion? I feel this contract again, like the last one was not properly noticed. Um, and also violates open meeting laws. Oh, Mr. Chairman, if I could quickly say, the contract is negotiated between private parties. It is, it is excluded from open meeting law. It will be public if it's entered, authorized and entered into. Um, uh, so it, it, there's no violation of either open meeting law and there's no violation, no violation of any public records law at this point. So um, the fact that you as, as Board of Trustees have to consider this doesn't mean it's also a public record. Is there any further discussion or questions for Vice President Garcia? Yes, Todd. All right, so if I'm understanding this, the lease back is for $1,200 a month. Do we have, it says it can be terminated by either party with 60 days notice for the effective day of termination. But I don't know that I see, so I don't see any particular timelines called out for if there's a, a time right now where it's set to uh, to sunset or expire, it's, it's just gonna kind of be open and ongoing until either we shut it down or he shuts it down or do we, or is there some other language that I'm missing on that? And it's twelve hundred dollars the correct amount. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, Chair Wold, Trustee Banducci. Um, no, we did not set a an end date to that to that lease arrangement. The intention is not um, to continue to operate the restaurant for a long period of time. That is the reason why the seller is interested in selling to the college is they do not want to continue to operate the restaurant. The conversation that occurred between me and the seller was about the fact that summer is a very busy time for them and they need, wanted a little extra time to kind of uh, get the staff help out the staff and give the community who supports that restaurant and the NIC community who supports the restaurant, give them a, an opportunity not to just shut it down, but to to give them an opportunity to exit gracefully. And I have a question. Great. Is that rent value market rate then? No, sir. As in under market rate, then, over market rate? Or as in we talked about the rate we discussed the rate without referring back to the market because in my opinion the um college if we did not rent it back to the original to the person who's currently operating it it would remain vacant is there any further discussion or questions for vice president garcia todd I think this one falls under the category of discussion, not necessarily a, a question for uh, for Sarah. We started purchasing properties years ago, and we were setting money aside. And, and uh, the last batch of money we set aside, we thought would buy us three of the residences on Military Drive. And as it turned out, with the price appreciation, it looks like that chunk's going to have gotten us two with, with a few dollars left. So we're going to have to keep augmenting that that fund obviously this would be a big augmentation of the fund here also and it's interesting that we we've got a, a patchwork there of what we own and i guess i'm starting to feel less and less enthusiastic about this endeavor because i suspect we're going to get to the end and we're going to have the last one or two or three property owners that are going to want us to empty the vault to buy their properties because they're going to feel they have us over a barrel. Um, and so I, I kind of dread getting to the last property or two or three and wondering what sort of money they're going to ask for us to, to, to get those properties so we have that contiguous land group uh, 
under our possession and in our ownership because without having all the uh, little squares of land there altogether, it limits us in what we can do with that until we have it all as, as, as one, one plat, one piece. So this is just a start, but I, I, don't know that, I don't know that this is gonna be an achievable goal. So I'm trying to decide how far into this we go until we get to the point of we get those last half a dozen properties and particularly this last few that people are holding on to. Cause I mean, we've been doing this for years I, I don't know the exact timeline for that. Maybe Sarah could share that when we started buying properties on Military Drive. But I know it's been pretty much my entire tenure, and I'll be at 10 years this fall. So we've been doing this for a while. So is this a fool's, a fool's errand that we keep buying stuff when we don't know that we can get there and end up buying everything over there? And who knows how we'll be held ransom at the end. So it's an interesting question as to where do we get and how long is it going to take us and what's it going to cost us? Pete? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, well, I do agree that the prices are going up. I believe that by statute, we can, we can only pay the assessed value. So it doesn't matter appraised what- Appraised value. Appraised value. So it doesn't matter what the, what the seller asks for. If, it's, if it doesn't appraise for that, uh, we can't buy it. I think that, yeah, I think that you know, this property acquisition will allow NIC future growth around its main campus. So. Is there any further discussion? Yeah. Greg, I, yes. Craig. I think it's odd that we give the president $2,500 a month, yet a whole business can rent for $1,200 a month. So it just seems odd. Is there any further discussion? Todd. I would acknowledge that what uh, Trustee Brichette is correct, and I do understand that it's about appraise, but to get to that point, you still have to have someone have the willingness to sell. And, and, right. that's, and that's my concern. And we were lucky to get the last batch, which was two, which were owned by the same family, which is one of the same families that we had had some um, butted heads with a little bit just a few years before, but they came to a different position and decided. So I'm not sure how this will all play out. Hard to know. I'll ask for the question. Question has been called. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. 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 Three to two. That concludes the business. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you for your attendance. <laughs>